Welcome, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. I'm Scott Patton, your co-host, along with Martin Patella, life coach at Life Enthusiast. Martin, how are you doing today? I'm doing better than I've done yesterday, and that's a good thing. That is a good thing. So uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to bring on a very, very special guest. He's a licensed medical doctor. He, got, he started in 1989. He's been a board-certified family physician for more than 20 years. And during his career as a medical doctor, he spent many years practicing as an urgent care physician, a general prim primary care physician. And most recently, for the past four years, he specialized in therapeutic injections, treating arthritis, tendonitis, carpal tunnel syndrome, and many other muscular skeletal problems. He's done over 40,000 joint ejections for uh, osteoarthritis on the knees and had very, very good success with that. He's got a Bachelor of Science degree in Biomechanical Engineering from the University of Pennsylvania School of Engineering, graduating summa cum laude with a grade point average of just a teeny, teeny, teeny <laughs> bit under four. <laughs> And uh, he's done a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, we we love having him because he, he talks about pain. And a lot of people suffer from chronic pain, whether it's fibromyalgia or lupus or arthritis, osteoarthritis, all those sort of things. So we want to give a, a warm life enthusiast welcome to Dr. Mike. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing very well. And that was uh, an amazing introduction. I didn't realize I was that good. <laughs> You're amazing. That's, yeah. <laughs> thank you. It's, it's really good to be here again. Good. Uh, thank you. And I'm really happy to have you on with us again. And I didn't realize that you were doing so many injections for pain. And so I'm a little bit curious as to if you could just tell us a little bit more about it, because I know, I know nothing sure. about it. Well, uh, as far as the injections go, I joined a practice about five years ago that basically they specialized in injections for osteoarthritis of the knees. And I realized that I was really good at doing injections. You know, I had had some experience before then, but when I joined this practice, I started doing about 75 injections a day, and I realized I was very good at it. So I did that for four years. I really enjoyed it. Patients, you know, 80% of patients had very good improvement for about six months to a year, but they had to come back and have more injections. It wasn't a cure. But I did mostly joint injections, but a lot of things, carpal tunnel injections, tendon injections, and I found it very satisfying. I eventually left that practice because the way they were running it, they wanted me to see more and more patients every day. The last six months I was there, I was seeing about 70 to 80 patients a day and doing 150 injections a day. Wow. And no matter what I said, they didn't want to cut back. So I finally said, you know what, I've done this for four years. I think I've had enough. And plus, that was the same time that I was... Uh, finishing getting certified with Zero Pay Now training and decided to transition into that. Amazing. Cool. Uh, and that's one of the things that we want to talk about today is uh, rapid life change and mm -hmm. these breakthrough sessions that you put on. And the last time you were on, we were talking more about um, kind of the physical aspects of pain. And this time what we want to do is really get a little bit more into the emotional side of it and, and right. some would even say more the spiritual side of it. In other words, if you're constantly worried and stressed, that has a physical impact on your body. Sure, definitely. And, and like we talked about last time, with a lot of forms of chronic physical pain like fibromyalgia, uh, chronic low back pain, chronic neck pain, even chronic whiplash, the, even the physical pain starts with the emotional starts with a more of a psychological condition where people have uh, stress tension and uh, repressed or or you know stuffed down emotions and that leads to physical pain so that's that's half of what I do I deal with the physical pain using the zero pain now techniques and help people get free from years or decades of physical pain very quickly um, you know for most types of pain uh, but what I also do is what I call rapid life change sessions and you could say it has to do with emotional pain. I guess it depends on your definition of emotional pain. It's basically a way to make very quick changes in your life that would usually take 10 or 20 years of therapy, but you can accomplish in one five-hour session things like getting over smoking cigarettes or losing weight once and for all or getting over a terrible claustrophobia. So emotional stuff, but leaning more towards making changes in your life. 
that that's the, the focus of it. Well, we have a large group of people who are suffering from fibromyalgia, over, I think over 16,000 people now. And uh, one of the things that we rarely get a chance to, to talk to them about or mention to them or have a discussion about is the idea that, uh, that the stress and the, the lifestyle that they're living is contributing to the pain that they're getting through their fibromyalgia. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's true. That's true of um, anyone with chronic pain and probably even more so people with fibromyalgia because they're not just dealing with the pain, but they're dealing with the fatigue and the fibro fog, you know, the trouble concentrating, all that. So there's a lot going on. And also, you know, this is not true of everyone with fibromyalgia, but a lot of people with fibromyalgia have a history of uh, abuse of some sort. Now, I don't know what the numbers actually are, but I recently, maybe about a week ago, posted something in one of the fibromyalgia support groups. I forget if it was yours or one of the other ones. Um, and it turned out that something like 50 people responded, yes, I also suffered childhood abuse or I suffered early adult emotional abuse or physical abuse or sexual abuse. So it, a lot of people with chronic pain have suffered abuse and it seems to be even more prevalent amongst people with severe fibromyalgia. Uh, I don't know the numbers, but that's just my impression so far. Right. I remember actually a similar post to that if it wasn't yours and yeah there was mm -hmm. a lot of people that just jumped on and said oh yeah I've had huge huge problems. Yeah, yeah that was probably the one. Yeah Yeah, to summarize that uh, I know that uh, there are all these four co major components that usually create the perfect storm called fibromyalgia which would be the traumatic event of some sort emotional trauma physical trauma usually some sort of car accident or whatever injury and then the toxic load that triggers up the immune system to the nearly nearly over the top and then all of a sudden it could be some last straw which might not seem like much like an sure. argument with a spouse or or a minor fender bender car accident or not that big and yet next thing you know is that they are beyond repair sick Sure. Isn't that the story of the camel and the straw? Yes, the last. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't Definitely. look like it should be the thing that did it, but it was just this little thing that did it. Right, and, and then in the medical world, of course, they are always looking to say uh, the vaccination that you had at age four is not responsible because it was not the last straw, so therefore mm -hmm. it couldn't have caused it. Right. Anyway, ah, that's another story. So, emotional. Yes, I would. I would sign up for saying anything that seems to be a physical and chronic problem. I would put 80% of it, much or maybe 90, like the iceberg in the ocean, the invisible part stuck somewhere below the reach where you can't even touch it, can't see it, and yet that is the causative bundle. Yeah, that's a that's a very good point because with with physical pain and also with other difficulties in life, it's amazing how much of it stems from our unconscious minds. You know, we have our, our conscious minds and our unconscious minds, and for people who may not be used to thinking that way, your conscious mind is basically everything you're consciously aware of. It's the stuff you're thinking of now or you were thinking of five minutes ago that you knew you were thinking about. The unconscious mind is the part of the mind or the brain, it's things you're not consciously aware of like you probably weren't just consciously aware of your heart beating or of your breathing because that's usually on automatic pilot uh, and you may not be consciously aware of emotions that can trigger physical pain or that can cause difficulties in life so what I tend to do is like I said with the zero pain now it really specifically addresses pain but with an emphasis on the emotional causes with the rapid life change basically you know I take people who either don't have a lot of problems but they have one or two big issues they're having trouble dealing with or someone who has a lot of problems like someone with fibromyalgia but who also has issues they're dealing with like for instance 12 years ago I was having such severe pain this is before I discovered zero pain now myself I was having such severe pain that I ended up starting smoking you know I was 40 years old I had never smoked before 
but I, I was hanging around with some friends that were smokers, and I was just so frustrated with the pain that I was having in my life, I just started smoking. And I ended up smoking for 12 years, and what I eventually did was I not only studied to be a zero pain now practitioner, but I learned from the same guy, Adam Heller, how to do rapid life change, uh, which is based on mostly on neuro-linguistic programming. And we'll come back to that in a minute if you want to define that. But basically what Adam helped me quit smoking. I had tried every way conceivable. I had tried to quit cold turkey. I had tried... Uh, medications, uh, nicotine gum, nicotine patches, gradually tapering off cigarettes, and before I ended up actually quitting, I was smoking, still smoking almost two packs a day. A one and a half session with Adam, a rapid life change session based on neuro-linguistic programming techniques, and I quit smoking that day, haven't had a cigarette in eight months, have absolutely no desire to smoke and feel no temptation to smoke. And the reason is what happened during that, uh, during that one and a half hour session was when I went into the session, I was absolutely convinced I was a smoker because I had been smoking a couple packs a day for two, uh, 12 years. During that session, he, he used some NLP techniques, and when the session was done, I was absolutely convinced I was an ex-smoker. I was so totally convinced mm -hmm. I no longer smoked that I couldn't smoke anymore. So for the past eight months, I haven't had a cigarette, and I have no desire to smoke. And that's how powerful the rapid life change sessions are. Uh, again, it, you could look at it from the point of view of emotional pain because, you know, I was in pretty much emotional turmoil because I couldn't quit smoking. But my focus, what I can do to help people is on helping them make those big changes that make their lives a lot better. Yep, that understanding, having done something in your life, having worked it in your body, having resolved a situation that was theoretically unresolvable, and mm -hmm. yet practical terms, um, bibbidi bobbidi boo, and you're on the other side of the divide, right? Exactly. And yeah. it's change happens in a heartbeat. If yes. For the change, you're that. After change, you're something else. Yes. How do you do that? How do you split that? And well, it's, uh, you just it's different in each case, but like I was saying, it's mostly based on neuro-linguistic programming, and for people who don't know what that is, neuro-linguistic programming, or NLP, it's psychological and mental techniques that enable a person to make changes in their lives much, much faster than they would on their own and much easier. And it's based on the concept that you have you have your neurology, which is the different senses that we have, you know, our sight, our hearing, our sense of smell, and you're interacting with your world and you get these all these senses coming into you and then in your brain your your brain processes all these senses and kind of puts them together into pictures and sounds and smells in your mind. And then the linguistic part has to do with, excuse me, communication. And the programming, I think of as almost like little programs. Like, I don't know how many people who are listening have experience doing computer programming, but when you do computer programming, you would have little small programs that are running that used to be called subroutines. Maybe they still are, I'm not sure. Uh, but it would be a little tiny program that has a particular task and in a, in a lot of ways, that's how our brains work. Uh, a good example is uh, a habit. Like, say you get up in the morning and you go in the bathroom and you're going to brush your teeth. You don't have to think, okay, now I have to grab the toothbrush and now I have to move my hand towards my mouth and now I have to go up and down. It's a small program that it happens automatically. You've done it so many times that you just brush your teeth automatically without really thinking about it. And a lot of the ways that the brain works has to do with a lot of these little programs or automatic functions and using neuro-linguistic programming it's very easy to make changes in those little programs of how your brain is functioning and that can make very big changes in your habits and in what you're doing. Um, let, let me give you a, a very simple example. I used to love drinking Pepsi. Um, I never really liked Coke as much, I always preferred Pepsi and about two years ago when I was studying neuro-linguistic programming, I decided to try out a technique 
called like to dislike. Basically, you start with something you like, and you change it in your brain so you don't like it anymore, so you don't overindulge in it. And I decided to use Pepsi because it was something I liked a lot. I was probably drinking a large glass of Pepsi a day. It has a lot of sugar. It's not very healthy. I figured, okay, I'll try this technique with Pepsi. So what I did was I got a picture in my mind of whatever came to my mind when I think of drinking Pepsi. So it was probably like me sitting at a restaurant holding a glass of Pepsi and drinking it. And then I kind of analyzed that picture in terms of, okay, was the picture a black and white picture or a color picture? Or was it a big picture or a little picture? Or was it straight in front of me or was it kind of off to the side? There's about 15 different characteristics of a picture. Was it a still picture or, or was it like a moving picture? So I got a picture in my mind when I think about drinking Pepsi. And then I thought of something that I that's similar that I dislike, which was for me, I used um, Dr. Pepper. I hate Dr. Pepper. I can't stand it. <laughs> so I got a picture in my mind of me drinking Dr. Pepper, and that gave me a picture with different characteristics, uh, black versus color, black and white versus color, or maybe the picture was smaller. I don't remember exactly. It may have been smaller as opposed to a bigger picture. And basically, once I figured out how that second picture looked, I changed the, in my mind, I changed the Pepsi picture so it would have the characteristics of the Dr. Pepper picture. And I just kind of sealed that in by getting a good picture of that and then almost like mentally just taking a snapshot of it. And what ended up happening is when I was done, immediately when I thought of Pepsi, my reaction was as if I were thinking of Dr. Pepper. And it was like, oh, yuck, I hate that. And now when I think about drinking Pepsi, it's very unappealing. I'll drink Pepsi now maybe once every six months instead of every day. So I still can drink it. If I drink it, it still tastes good. But in my mind, I've changed that little program that was my liking Pepsi program, and I changed it in subtle ways just to make it a, a disliking Pepsi program. And now I hardly ever drink Pepsi anymore. And that's just a, one example of, of how, how well it can work. So this would work really good with people that have deep-seated cravings. Yeah, uh, deep-seated cravings. There's um, a lot of different neurolinguistic processes. Some work for cravings. Some work very well for uh, nervous habits like nail, nail biting. There's a, a very quick technique that works really well to stop people from uh, feeling the, the need to bite their nails. There's... Um, um, people have this have these beliefs that can be limiting beliefs, beliefs that don't help them in life, like maybe a belief that they're unlovable or a belief that they're not as good as other people. There's uh, techniques that very quickly help you change from a negative belief to a positive belief. And just like that, all of a sudden, you're, you're thinking so much more positively about yourself. Um, Dr. Mike, I've been... Uh, I've been uh scrolling through the fibromyalgia support group and, uh -huh. and I came across a meme and I think this is probably a bit of a belief and I thought I would just read it to you and okay. then you could talk a little bit about some of the things you might tell people that have this sure, belief sure. or and it could turn into a worry that becomes a belief and it's quote I've been sick for so long some people seem to think I should be used to it but they don't understand is it doesn't get easier it just gets more exhausting and I think if I had that belief mm -hmm. I would be on the wrong direction I would yeah. not be spiraling up into health and joy and and love I'd be spiraling down into more sure. darkness. yeah I, I agree that's definitely a, a, a good example of a belief that would definitely make things much more difficult for you uh, and you have to remember beliefs are not necessarily true a belief is an idea that's been reinforced in your mind over a period of time until you believe it to be true. So something like that, where someone with fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia believes that everything has to be really, really hard and it's going to get worse and worse, they may have come to believe that because of their experience where they've tried this for fibromyalgia and they've tried this and they've tried another thing and they just haven't gotten good results. So that's the belief they ended up with. But it's not a belief that's helpful, especially once you can introduce someone to 
uh, techniques that can help, like Zero Pay Now, for instance, uh, or another type of mind-body program. So in a case like that, it would be very helpful to take this patient, if they're willing, if they're interested, and help them change that belief. And I can't really say as to you know what you would change that belief to, because it's different for every person, but it could be just a matter of believing that um, there are always possibilities to make change, or uh, just because it didn't work out in the past doesn't mean they won't work out for me now. So for each person, it would be different. You know, I would sit down with them. We, I do the um, rapid life change session as a five-hour session because it takes about an hour to an hour, hour and a half to basically analyze the person's problem, figure out how they're doing the problem, what exactly are they doing, thinking, or believing that's keeping them stuck in this problem, and then figure out exactly which... NLP techniques will help them uh, get free from the problem. And sometimes it's just one technique and you're done in two hours, and other times it could take the whole five hours. But so with each person, it would be the solution would be a little bit different. But basically, you could change their belief into a much more positive, forward thinking belief as opposed to a you know negative, I'm always going to be stuck, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I would say the belief that change is possible. And pain-free life is possible for me, and uh, and uh, dancing with my whatever is possible for me. Those kind of things, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's amazing with neurolinguistic programming. You don't. Uh, okay. Um, affirmations are really popular these days. I don't know how much experience you guys have with this, but people putting positive statements and putting it on their mirror and reading it every time they're in the bathroom. And I'm not against things like that, but that takes a long time to convince yourself of what you're reading. And it can be done, but I think for most people to convince yourself, like say you really think you're not lovable and you have an affirmation that says, I am lovable, it could take months or years or decades to really believe that and if you have a deep-seated enough belief that you're unlovable you may never be able to take an affirmation and actually fully believe it but if you take neurolinguistic programming NLP is like magic now I don't mean magic like spiritual magic I mean it's amazing how quickly and how completely it works you take a negative belief and as long as the person is willing to have that belief changed in 10 minutes, you can change it to that positive belief, and, it, and it's done. It's changed compared to having to reread that affirmation 10 times a day for months or years to really believe that. So th that's just the difference. That's how amazingly quick and complete uh, you can change a belief. Yeah, to me, the advertisement, uh, pardon me, to me, the message on the mirror is like watching an advertisement on television. You know, it's it's just an ad. You see it flash, right? And yeah. You, yeah. you act on, well, you sort of maybe, if you see it a million times or 10,000 times, it may embed itself. But if it doesn't have emotional charge on it, it doesn't. Anything that has an emotional charge on it becomes stronger. Right. So if the suffering or, or trauma or whatever that happened back when, when the opinion or belief that you're unlovable was embedded, looking at a unlovable on the mirror with no emotional charge, it will never trump the uh, the already stored piece of information. True. Yeah, that's true. And you know, I'm about with rapid life change. I'm about well, you can tell from the word rapid, making change as quickly as possible. Because, be like before, I did it to quit smoking. I was miserable regarding the smoking for almost 12 years. Probably the first year I smoked, I enjoyed it. After that, it was just something that had control of me and I couldn't stop. So, you know, I was miserable. And I tried all the traditional ways to quit smoking. And then I suddenly, you know, got to a point where I could try a rapid life change and it worked literally in an hour and a half. So looking back, if I had known... Adam Heller, and if I had known about NLP and all this, I could have quit smoking, you know, 10, 12 years ago. But instead, I, I had to try for quite a long time to do it the hard way, because I didn't know of a better way until I did discover a better way. 
So that's what I like to help people with. You know, uh, I'm also overweight significantly, and that's another. Th we did another rapid life change session for me about a month ago, and I'm like so motivated to lose weight now. It's just amazing. But I, that's going to take longer. You know, time will tell. You know, I can't lose a hundred pounds overnight. So, uh, but I did that session about a month ago with Adam, and and my motivation to lose weight is off the chart. And but I've been trying to lose weight for 20 years. Same thing. If I knew about rapid life change or even just neuro-linguistic programming 20 years ago, I probably wouldn't have spent the last 20 years trying all different techniques to lose weight. I would have found the one that works a lot faster. So, Isn't that interesting how you need to be ready for change? You need to have reached a point where you have had enough of whatever it is you have in your life. Yeah, that's definitely I, true. I'm finding that, that even though I lead a horse to the trough, they sometimes just don't drink. Yeah. So I keep thinking, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, this person actually wants to get out of pain. Mm -hmm. They're ready for it. At least they're saying, I am in so much pain, I don't want pain. Yeah, yeah. But are they actually willing to just step over the threshold and just say, oh, I am willing now to have a change in my life. Yeah, and then actually true. take the actions and the follow through that's required to actually do the change, right? Like, yeah, definitely. We're and, used and to behaving to in a certain way, and then to actually change that is not always easy. It's <coughs> using the things you're talking about, Dr. Mike. I think it, mm -hmm. it really helps and it makes it easier. But the average person without those tools, right, they get doing the same old, same old. That's true. That's true. And I have to say, I mean, I'm guilty of that also. Uh, one example is, you know, I had my own struggle with chronic pain for a long time before I discovered Zero Pain Now. And then when I run through the program, my pain got like 98% better within a month. And it was doing like great. Every once in a while, I'll get a stiff neck. I know it's from diversion pain syndrome. I know how to make it go away. But what happened was a few weeks ago, I got a very mild stiff neck, and I know what to do. I know the techniques to use to make it go away, but it was very mild. I was busy doing all sorts of other things, and I kept saying, you yeah, know, I'll, I'll do this tomorrow. I'll do this tomorrow. And after about three weeks, I woke up one day, and the stiff neck was significantly worse. I said, okay, now I'm doing it, and now the, the neck pain is almost gone. But... For a while, I, I wasn't quite ready myself. You know, I, I guess I kind of felt like I needed to put my energy into other things, and it was bothering me, but it wasn't bothering me that much. It wasn't until it started to bother me, bother me more that I was like, okay, let's get in gear and just take care of this. <laughs> so, you know, we all kind of do that to a certain extent, I guess. You know. Well, yeah. that's true. I could come up with 20 examples from my life easily that I know better, and yet, mm, no, I'm just doing it the wrong way. Thank you. That's my way. True, true. Um, I, don't know if, I don't know what direction you want to go from here, but should I mention a few other types of situations that the rapid life change that, can help? That would be good because we're coming to the end of our time, so it would be great okay. to, to okay, share I'll just those mention a, a stories. Few, I'll just mention a few of the big ones. I, I, I already mentioned the negative beliefs about yourself, changing that to a positive, productive belief. Um, phobias, uh, claustrophobia, fear of spiders, uh, fear of flying uh, works great for that. Um, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, compulsions, like I said, nail biting or some people like scratching their skin or things like that. Um, Basically, any kind of habit, oh, it works very well for addictions, um, um, alcohol addiction, um, uh, uh, narcotic addictions. Now, for that, the process is a little more complicated. It takes a little more work because addictions are very complicated and complex, but a rapid, change, a rapid life change can help people get a really, really big boost in terms of overcoming overcoming almost any kind of addiction. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any... There's other ones, but I'm just not thinking I'm off, off the top. A question, which is, we have people who are reacting to foods, right? Like they, they, for instance, have a, I don't know, some kind of a allergic reaction to 
let's name something. Peanuts. Gluten. No, no, not that. Even I'm, I'm thinking uh, if I eat almonds or nuts or whatever, I will have a bad reaction, right? I mean, mm -hmm. big group, tree nuts. Is that something that you suppose could be reached through this uh, method, or is that too physiological that, that we cannot reach it through the subconscious? I would say yes <laughs> to both of those. <laughs> um, a lot of, like a lot of people with, um, say, peanut allergies, like Scott was mentioning, that's a real physiological thing. But I'm sure there's a, you know, there's a spectrum of how people react to everything in terms of allergic reactions or intolerance. Like one good example is gluten sensitivity. It's very common these days. I, I'm sure there's a certain percentage of people where it's more of a belief and less of a physiological thing and if they change their belief a lot their their problem would go away that's one that would be a little trickier with it would take more evaluation to figure out you know is this is this something that a person just believes and that's stopping them from being free in this area of their life or is this a real physiological problem so I'd say that's an area that's probably not not the best, but I mean I wouldn't rule out being able to help someone with something like that. I want to jump in for a second, talking mm -hmm. about the impact that the mind. Ha I will share a story, mm -hmm. the impact that the mind has on the body, because mm -hmm. a lot of what we're talking about is oh, I just changed this belief, and all of a sudden all these things go away. Yet how is that possible, right? Because we're mm -hmm. used to hitting ourselves with a hammer. Oh, I've got mm -hmm. pain, and we've never thought. Pain go away, pain go away, pain go away, and it did, right? Right, right. <laughs> Usually, uh, but I about ten years ago, I did fire walking about six oh, times okay. Okay. over about a two-year period, uh -huh. and uh, one of the ladies that taught it had done like taught thirty fire walks or some mm -hmm. large number, right? So she was very used to it, and she had this process and the affirmation she would have people say. Mm -hmm. And she did this fire walk, and then the next day a lady called her and said, I was at the fire walk last night. I'm now in the hospital. I have third-degree burns on the bottom of my feet. And so she starts running into her process to help this lady heal, and the lady says, no, wait. I have to finish the story. I didn't walk. I just oh. watched. I just watched everybody just walk. Watched. Yeah. <laughs> and, I'm not surprised. I'm really not surprised. Uh it's amazing how much our minds do control our bodies, and there's there's a, probably a lot more to it than than we understand currently. One one thing, um, some people have multiple personality disorder where they have one personality that's in control part of the time, and another personality that comes out and takes control of their behavior another part of the time. And I've heard of documented cases where, with a person with multiple personality disorder, that one personality had a urinary tract infection, and when they would switch personalities, all of a sudden the urinary tract infection would be gone. And then when they would switch to back to the first personality, all of a sudden the urinary tract infection would be there again. And that's one that's a little hard to understand, but it, it's amazing how much our minds do control our bodies. It's Indeed. I remember two dramatic cases of that. One was... a. Person A, personality A was diabetic, and B was not. One was yeah, independent, yes. and the other one was not. Yeah, that's a good example. I, I, w I was trying to think of that one. It wouldn't come to my mind, but yeah, I've read about that also, definitely. Yeah. And one other one was that one had brown eyes, and another one had blue eyes. That's that, a really interesting that one. That <laughs> really just, what the heck? Yeah. How do you do I, that? I have trouble figuring out how that one would work, but... I wouldn't rule it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's documented, right? There's, there's right, right. serious scientific documentation about it. But anyway, so here we are at the on the silver platter handing over to the audience the possibility that whatever is currently running your life, and you might not know why, but you know that it is, that you can actually change it. You can change your beliefs. You can change... You can change uh, how you get turned on or turned off. Like you can get turned on sexually about something. You mm -hmm. can change that. You can mm -hmm. stop enjoying looking at, I mean, whatever it is that you might like to think of as it's on. Mm -hmm. it can be gone from your future. Yes. You can change 
uh, your food addictions or attractions or and, and well we just you outlined uh, laid it out so I don't need to repeat it but the point is that the, all of this is available right here at the link that that we are attaching to the video on your website right With, and basically I'm sorry I, I would just add that almost any change you want to make in your life I can help you make I say almost because there's gonna be occasional things that are just beyond my experience but almost anything you need to change any change you need to make and if you go to my website and go to the page on rapid life change uh, there would be a contact form and the first thing you would do is contact me and we would talk about it we would talk about what change you want to make and I would let you know if that's something I can help you with and then if we decide to go ahead the format would be usually two weeks of keeping a diary of some sort to prepare for the session like if you're trying to lose weight keeping track of what you're eating and keeping track of what you're feeling as you're eating you know just to get you more in tune with your emotions and your mind and your body as it relates to the problem and then we would do a five-hour session sometimes shorter but up to five hours uh, most likely by Skype unless you happen to live in New Jersey where I am uh, and then by the end of the five-hour session your problem would be solved and I'd probably give you a little homework to do for a week just to keep focused on you know, making sure you're you're heading in the right direction but that's the basic way that it would go and um, so if you're interested you know just go to my website contact me and we could go from there right and the website is freedomnowmd.com it'll be along the bottom here uh, when I finish editing this mm -hmm. video Okay, and you would just go to the heading of the page on, on that website that says Rapid Life Change Sessions. Great. Well, Dr. Mike, thank you very much for taking time and joining us again. Really appreciate having you. And before we go, do you have a, a one little tip that you could leave everybody? One little tip? I would say the one that comes to my mind right now is don't be afraid of your emotions. If you're some people try to avoid emotions but a lot of problems emotional and physical stem from uh, trying to avoid emotions so I'd say don't be afraid of your emotions and if you get the feeling that there's an emotion there that you don't want to deal with take some time like meditate or relax and purposely try and focus on it and see what it's trying to tell you awesome thank you very much you've you're been watching welcome. You've been watching the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network, restoring vitality to you. Thanks for joining us, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.